Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you another time video this week. This week it's a bass fly, smallmouth fly, or trout, or carp fly. Take your pick, whatever, however you want to fish it. Um, it's a crayfish pattern. This is Joe's Mini Crawfish Jig. Uh, it's a pattern I was asked to tie by a customer. He got it from Orvis. He found it on the Orvis website, ordered one, and um, gave it to me, asked me if I could tie some, and I put my own little twist on it, so it's not exactly how you're going to see it on Orvis or wherever else you might find it. This is my little twist on it, how I like to tie it, and how I'm going to fish it. Um, I like to change colors on things, match what I have, use, use the material I have, and that's what I was doing here. I'm not sure exactly some of the materials that was on that original fly, but this is the way I tied it, the way I like it, the way I'm going to fish it. Um, one thing I did switch was the color of the pinchers. I use gray, or sorry, brown and orange, mix them. I like things to be two-toned, two colors. It's more natural to me. Uh, in nature, most things are camouflage colored. So the, adding the two colors gives it more of a camouflage look. Anyways, guys, enough talking. Here you're gonna see a picture of the fly and then the material list to tie it. Okay, here in the vise you can see my variation of Joe's Mini Crayfish Jig. Let's get into tying it. For a hook, I'm using a Firehole 570. This is a size 8. You can tie it bigger or smaller if you really want to. For a bead um, on that size 8, I got a 4.6 millimeter copper bead, tungsten bead, slotted one. And for thread, I'm using some 12 watt um, Semperfly Nano Silk. This is brown. Just going to wrap that on there, get that on, lock that bead in place, and then cut my thread off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my thread back to the bend of the hook and go a little bit around the bend of the hook here. Oops. And I'm going to put some dubbing on. For dubbing, I'm using some brown olive SLF squirrel dub. And I'm going actually kind of heavy on this. This is going to be the head of the crayfish. So, like I said, put that on there a little bit thick, not humongously thick. Use your head here. But we're just going to wrap that on a little bit around the bend of the hook and come right up to where it straightens out on the hook. Now, got that a little too thick, so I need to twist that down a little bit tighter. There we go. I like that. So I'm going to make a nice little ball right there on the bend of the hook. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pieces of orange flex floss and two pieces of brown. This is my variation of it. This is the way I like to tie it. And I'm going to tie a knot in it. Four of them together, tie a knot, and then about two inches long I'm going to tie another knot and cut the ends off right at the end, end of the knot. This is going to make my pinchers on the fly. And I'm just going to set that on the side halfway back. I'm going to tie that on on the side. So you see there it's the side closest to you. And I'm going to pull the other one across over to the other side. And I want to get these even here. So I'm just going to pinch it down on the other side of the hook to, at an even length. And then wrap it down. And I'll pull on them both a little bit just to get them straight on the sides like you can see there. And then I'm just going to cover up the flex floss on the hook. So there you can see I got both of them going out the back. Now... I'm going to get a little bit more dubbing and stuff on here that's going to push them all backwards. So now, the easiest thing for me to do is flip it upside down. Uh, with my Renzetti, I can do that real easily. Uh, use whatever you do, flip it up in the hook, whatever you need to do. Next thing I'm going to use is some, this is black barred rabbit strips, gold variant. And you can see there, I've been trimming it off already. I'm just going to take a clump of it, about a half inch long or so. And I'm going to cut that right off of that rabbit strip. So I'm just going to have a big pile of rabbit dubbing there. All in my finger. So there you can see I got it cut off. I'm going to pinch it down by the tips. I'm going to tease some of the fluff out of the back so it's not as thick. And uh, just get some of that teased out. 
and then we're going to place it on the hook and I want this to stick out past the hook shank here. I'm going to put it on your side there. Just past the hook shank, the bend of the hook. And I'm going to set it on top of the hook, which is actually the bottom of the hook now. And I'm going to tie this down. And I'm going to tie that right back there to those pinchers. And you can see I already have it, the length of it there. I'm just going to tie it down the rest of the way on the hook. Build up a little bit of body, that's fine. Then I'm going to take my scissors, split that in half, and put half down each side of the hook. And there I'll tease it down out of the way. So that's going to finish off the head. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brown piece of flex floss and I'm going to put it longer. I want this to be my antenna. I'm going to put it longer than the pinchers and I'm going to tie it down on your side of the hook here first and get it on the top side of the hook. And then I want to wrap it down one side of the hook and then swing it around the other side so it goes one on each side of the hook point there as you can see. I got one going on each side. And then I can trim that off at a length there if it's real long. Like I said, I want it out past my pinchers. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to tie the legs in on this. The fur of the legs, I'm going to do like I usually do for legs. This is just a hen. This is a Brahma hen. And uh, just using the wet fly hackle here, pinch the tips, stroke all the fibers back, and I'm going to tie it in by the tips like that. I want a fairly long one because I want to get as wrap, many wraps as I can, but I don't want the hackle to be too big. So you got to be a little bit picky there. Then we're going to come back in with some more brown olive dubbing, and I'm going to cover that hook shank up. And again, a thicker dubbing than you usually see me tie with. I'm tying a crayfish. Crayfish aren't small, but don't go overboard and make it non-proportional. So wrap that right up there to those pinchers. And then I'm going to put a little bit more dubbing on so I can wrap my way back. And I'll, I kind of want this to be fairly even. You see it's a little bit bigger towards the head. That's fine. I'm going to put just a little bit more on there. And I'm going a little bit loose with it, but there you can see I got a nice taper to it. Now I'm going to take my hackle pliers, put my hackle on here, and I'm just going to wrap these legs back. And I'm going to spread them out as I go back. I'm only going to get about three wraps, and I want these all to go towards the head. So make sure you don't trap any fibers and tease them towards the head as you go. And then I want this to end up back here at the bead where I'm going to tie it off. So tie that off there at the bead, trim the shaft of the feather off, and again, just tweak these a little bit best you can. Make sure I get that tied down. Now, the next thing I'm going to use is some brown thin skin. And you can see here I cut this, oh, about three-eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch wide. And what I did was I cut a little round end in it, and then you can barely see it here, I cut a little slot, which is going to go over the eye. So I laid it down, I cut my slot where I wanted my slot in the middle, then I laid it on top so it went as far back as I wanted it to to create the back the shell of this. And I'm just going to pop that over the top just as you see there. And then I'm going to tie it down right behind that bead. So once I get it on there, I'm just going to make a couple wraps, tie it down, then I'm going to make sure it's straight on the back. And there you can see I got it nice going straight down the back. And I'm going to try to wiggle my thread in between some of those fibers to make the legs. And I want to make two segments here. So make about two wraps, pop up a little further, try not to trap too many legs, make another segment, and then I'm going to wrap my way back to that bead. There you see I got two little segments in there like I like it. Last thing we're going to do, pull these legs forward, and I'm going to pull this under the underside and I'm going to tie it down on the bottom side of the fly. And you can see by doing that, it gives you a little tail section there on the head. So really cool pattern. And we're just going to whip finish and then trim that bottom off and we're done. So just put a nice little whip finish there. Come down on the bottom. 
I trim it. I leave a little extra hanging on there. Enough to keep those legs kicked back the direction I want. And then if you want, it never hurts. Put a little bit of solar res bone dry on there. And hit her with your light. And that's all this to this simple little crayfish pattern. It'll work for a trout, it'll work for carp, it'll work for smallmouth. Have fun fishing it, guys. Alright guys, I hope you like that fly. It's a great looking crayfish pattern, and it's not that hard to tie. Tie a couple of them, you'll be on to it. And uh, it's a lot of fun for me to tie. I think it looks great when it's done, and it uh, gives you a little sense of satisfaction when you're done with it. Anyways, I'm going to be fishing this for trout nymph this this is a heavy pattern uh you know with that 4.6 bead it's going to get to the bottom definitely nymph fish it swing it for smallmouth. you're going to catch fish that way and of course if you're into carp fishing uh you know you want to sight fish with them cast it out past it strip it back let it let it sit right in front of them give them a twitch or two maybe to catch their eye and hold on when they take it so have fun tying, guys. If you like this pattern and want me to tie some for you, give me a shout at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. And if you need any materials to tie it, like always, guys, please head over and support our website at wholesingersflyshop.com. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next week when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.